If you've been writing Python code for a while, you probably had to deal with resolving conflicts between different packages and versions. That's what we call dependency hell. Most ecosystems actually have this problem. You have all sorts of libraries and packages that everybody uses, but there's also different versions of the programming languages, operating systems, and so on. To solve this, you need a separate and isolated environment that you have full control over that avoids conflicts with globally installed packages or Python interpreters, and that's easily reproducible in a variety of contexts. That's what we call a virtual environment. It's a sort of metaverse, if you will, but then useful and you don't need to wear two ridiculous monitors in front of your eyes, and you get to keep your data. Come to think of it, it's not really a metaverse at all. So, scrap that. Today, I'll show you what I think is the easiest way to do this using a tool called Poetry. Before you start a new project, it's important to think about how to set it up and how to organize things in terms of design. I have a free guide that helps you with this. You can get it at arian.co slash design guide. It contains the seven steps that I take whenever I design a new piece of software, and I hope it helps you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in the past. So, arian.co slash design guide. The link is also in the description. Now, let's dive in. Before I talk about virtual environments, I'll first show you the code example that I use today. Actually, the code itself is not really that important because we're not really going to do anything with it. It's just to have some sort of placeholder project that I can create a virtual environment for. So in this case, what I'm going to use is a file called ID generator that has a couple of functions to generate a variety of IDs. And next to this, I have a couple of tests for these functions that's in a separate test folder that uses simply the unit test and pytest packages. So again, I won't dive deeply into the code here because it's not that relevant. I'm purely using it to set up the virtual environment in a few minutes. So what is exactly a virtual environment? Well, it's a folder structure that contains an isolated environment of Python and its dependencies. So when you create a virtual environment, then that virtual environment is going to contain a copy or a sim link to the Python binary. It's also going to contain a py vnf configuration file that contains information about what kind of virtual environment this is. It also contains a site packages directory that contains the extra dependencies that you are going to need for your project. So it's really a lightweight, isolated environment that you can just quickly set up and throw away again when you no longer need it. The typical things that you will do is that you will create the virtual environment, which creates the folder structure. You can activate it so that you're now inside this virtual environment. You can add dependencies or remove dependencies from that virtual environment and you can deactivate it again. And all of the tools that help you build these virtual environments more or less follow the same types of processes. So if you wanna start using virtual environments, there are a bunch of different tools you can use. The most basic one is VNF, which is part of the Python standard library since Python 3.3. And this basically allows you to create a virtual environment. It doesn't offer anything extra like dependency management, so you would use this together with pip. So it's not ideal. Another tool you could use is virtualenv, which is a third-party tool. It's actually one of the first tools available to allow you to create a virtual environment. And part of the functionality of virtualenv is now actually also included in vnv. Another tool is pyenv, which focuses specifically on having different versions of Python available on your system. This is sometimes useful if, for example, your OS ships with an older version of Python and you wanna use a newer version, but you don't want your OS to potentially break because it depends on things that were available only in the older version of Python. Then you have a tool called pipenv, which aims to bring together pip, virtualenv, and pyenv, and basically have one tool to do all of those things. Yet another tool you can use is Conda, which is an open source package dependency management system. Uh, it's specifically aimed at data science and scientific computing. And this also provides a way to manage dependencies in virtual environments and even includes possibility to manage non-Python packages. However, the tool that I'm going to use in this video is Poetry. I actually really like Poetry for a few reasons. The first one is that it's actually really simple. It really simplifies all the steps of creating environments, dealing with them, adding dependencies, removing them. It's, it's really simple to use. I'll show you in a few minutes. Configuring it is really easy and it does a lot of things for you automatically, which is a big improvement over just using pip and a requirements.txt file, for example. Actually, I'm considering using Poetry for all the code examples in my future videos. So I think that will make it easier for you as well to 
uh, use the code that I use as an example and have a clear idea of the packages and the Python version that you're going to need in order to run it. Another reason why I like Poetry is that it not just deals with virtual environments and manages dependencies for you, you can also use the publisher package to PyPy. So it's really a all-in-one tool to deal with everything that you need. And finally, there's performance. So Poetry is quite fast and efficient. It uses, for example, a lock file so that it doesn't have to reinstall dependencies all the time. So that's another reason for me to use it in my projects. So how does Poetry actually work? Well, it's really, really simple. So I'm just going to switch to my console here. So this is everything that's in the project. So how do you actually use Poetry? Well, that's really simple. You just have to install it as a first step. And you do that by calling pip install poetry if you write it correctly. And of course, I already did this. So it says a bunch of times that the requirement has already been satisfied. But this is how you basically install it. And then getting set up with poetry is actually also really simple. So if you have a new project, then what you need to add is a toml file, a pyproject.toml file. That's what you see here. This is an example of what this looks like. So there are some settings about the name of the package, the version description, the license. You see that there's also the dependencies in this project file. Uh, there's some other requirements. And you don't have to write this yourself. You can actually generate it by simply calling poetry in it. And then it's going to ask you a few questions and then it will generate this TOML file for you. But if I call it here, then obviously there is already a TOML file, so it doesn't do that. But that's how you can set it up just in a minute. So once you have this project description file, what you can then do is tell Poetry to create a virtual environment and install the necessary packages. And that's also really simple. We do Poetry install, and now it's going to create the virtual environment. You see that it's also installing the packages. So we need a couple of things like PyTest and BSON. And as you can see, those are actually defined here as dependencies. So now you've created the virtual environment. And you can also get some information from Poetry about where that virtual environment is and what it looks like by simply writing poetry and info. And then it's going to print out information about the environment. And if you just want the path, you just write minus P and then you're only getting the path. This is sometimes helpful. So it basically shows you some information about which Python version is being used and where the virtual environment is located. So you see that this virtual environment is actually in some local cache folder somewhere. And that's maybe not ideal. What I typically like to do is that my virtual environment is part of the project folder. And that's actually an easy way to change this in Poetry. So the first thing that I'm going to do is simply delete this virtual environment again. So I'll just switch to my Finder app. And this is the folder where we have the virtual environment that Poetry created. So I'm just going to delete this because I don't want to have it here. So what you can do if you want to make sure that virtual environments are created inside your project folder is to tell Poetry that you change the configuration setting virtual envs dot in project. And when I select this, I can set this to true. And now when I do poetry install, you'll see that it now creates, if I scroll up here, it has now created a .vn folder, which is the virtual environment folder structure that I mentioned in the beginning. And there you see we have things like uh, binaries, uh, we have a library with site packages, you can also see that here. And this is basically where all the dependencies are being installed, like uh, BSON, for example. So let me close this again. And now we have the virtual environment. So how do you actually run our programs inside the virtual environment? Well, with Poetry, that's also really simple. We simply write Poetry shell. And now we're going to open a shell within the virtual environment. And now I can start running my code. For example, I can run the test by simply calling PyTest. And now you see it actually runs the tests within the virtual environment. Now adding and removing dependencies is also really easy. For example, let's say I want to add the requests package. So in that case, I simply write poetry add requests. And now it's installing the request package. And what's nice is if you look at the PyProject project file, you see that request package has now also been added here. So it keeps the dependencies up to date for you automatically. And of course, removing it is just as simple. Simply write poetry, remove requests. And now it's going to remove that dependency again, and it also removes it from the TOML file. So this is a really easy way to keep track of the dependencies that are needed and they're all included in the PyProject TOML file. So how do you get out of this virtual environment shell? Well, just write exit. And what you can also do is you can ask Poetry which environments are active. 
So I'm going to list now the environments. You can have multiple environments if you like. So there is now .vn, which is the activated environment. Let's go back into the shell again. So now I'm back into my virtual environment shell. Instead of just exiting the shell, you can also deactivate the virtual environment by simply write deactivate. And now you're out of the shell and the environment is also deactivated. Removing the virtual environment is actually really simple because everything is in a single folder. So if I pick this folder and I do delete, now the virtual environment is deleted and I can create a new one if I like. Like I said before, Poetry also supports building and publishing your package on Pipeline, which is really nice. So in order to get started with this, you first need to tell Pipeline where to publish your package to. So again, you use Poetry config, and then you can indicate the name of the repository. For example, test PyPy, and that's https test.pypy.org slash legacy. So now I've made this configuration. What you then can do is go to the test PyPy repository and get a token that allows you to publish packages to the repository and set it in Poetry by simply writing Poetry config, and then you name the token, let's say PyPy token dot test pipi and then you copy the token so that's typically pipi dash and then the rest of your token i don't have the token here so i'm not going to do it now but this is basically how you do it so once you've done this you can tell poetry to actually build the package for you and you simply type poetry build and that's going to build id generator package like you see here it also includes the version number and now publishing is also really simple you just write poetry publish and then you provide the repository which is test by pi i'm not going to do that now because i don't have a token but this is basically how you do it and if you don't want to do the build step separately you can also write here a dash dash build and then it's also going to build the package before you actually publish it to PyPy. There's a couple of things you need to think about when you're working with a tool like Poetry. One is that, of course, you have to make sure that you manage your dependencies properly. So you have to make sure that the dependencies that you installed that are up to date, that the version numbers are incremented whenever a new version is updated of the package. So Poetry adds this installed package automatically to the project file, the TOML file. But for example, if you're using pipenv, then this doesn't happen automatically. Then you have to add it yourself to requirements.txt. And of course, when you're using virtual environments, you need to make sure that when you create the virtual environment that you actually install the dependencies properly. So if you forget that, you're going to get module not found errors. Another thing you shouldn't forget, of course, if you work with virtual environments, is that you need to activate the virtual environment and enter the shell before you can actually run the code. Otherwise, it's not going to work. What I find typically works best for me is to have the virtual environment folder inside my project folder. So make sure you change that Poetry configuration setting when you install it. Another thing you need to be aware of is that sometimes there are compatibility issues leading to you not being able to use a package that easily. For example, there are packages like PyAuto GUI that rely on some system level packages. And these system level packages are not going to be available in the virtual environment unless you have already installed them. Also, there are packages that use C extensions to increase performance, like NumPy, for example. So in that case, if you use a virtual environment, you probably have to make sure that things are compiled. And those C extensions might actually link with other system installed packages. So that might also result in some problems when you try to run the code. So it's not completely isolated. A final thing you need to watch out for is that virtual environments can potentially take up a lot of space. So if you have lots and lots of different projects, use lots and lots of different environments, you have to make sure that you have enough disk space. For example, here you can see that the VN folder is only 10 megabytes, but if you install lots of dependencies, then that might get really large. So if you're running out of disk space, make sure that you delete virtual environment folders that you're not using anymore. Overall though, I think virtual environments are a really nice solution as they allow you to create a really nice isolated environment, which makes it easier to share your code. And I hope this video gave you a quick overview of how to use a tool like Poetry to make your life easier. Like I've briefly shown you, Poetry also allows you to build and publish packages on PyPy. Another tool you can use for that is Setup Tool. So if you wanna learn more about how to build and distribute your package and share your package with other developers, watch this video next. Thanks for watching and take care.